guys, happy Friday. Welcome to another First Chapter Friday. Today, I have an extraordinary book for you. In fact, the title is The Key to Extraordinary, and it's written by Natalie Lloyd. In this story, a, there's a family, and the family always has a dream, and that dream tells them what their extraordinary destiny is going to be. And the main character in this story, Emma, she is waiting on her dream to happen. She hasn't had it yet, and she can't wait to see what exciting and extraordinary destiny she has. So let's jump into the first chapter and see what we can find out about these extraordinary dreams. Chapter one, it is a known fact that the most extraordinary moments in a person's life come disguised in ordinary ways. It is a known fact for me, at least, because that morning started out mostly the same as all the other mornings before. I woke up to an ache in my chest, the smell of chocolate, and the sound of the ghost making racket in the kitchen. Now, I'm not the sort to dwell on doom and gloom. Life is too short for that, but I should at least try to describe my ache briefly. It's not the kind that comes from eating tacos too late at night. It's the kind that comes from being left behind. I think my heart knows I should be filling it with new memories, new jokes, and wondrous adventures with the one person I loved most of all, but that person is gone now. And so my heart has a giant hole in it. I call it the big empty. I squeezed my eyes shut and reminded myself of these affirmations. Tonight you could have your destiny dream. Never doubt your starry aim. I repeated these words while I tugged on my mud boots over my jeans. And again, when I zipped up my favorite hoodie, early summer had settled into the mountains, but the air was still chilly first thing in the morning. I didn't feel cold though, I felt energized. Just the prospect of my destiny dream rattled my brain to such a degree that I fixed my sideways braid on the wrong side of my head. I'm not superstitious about most things, but I knew the day would go badly if I wore my braid on the wrong side. Finally, I snatched up my messenger bag and zoomed down the stairs to see what the ghost was up to. Since there's no sense in scaring a ghost who might whirl around and scare me in turn, I decided to declare myself, it's Emma, I called out as I stepped into the darkness of the Boneyard Cafe. My family's bakery, the Boneyard Cafe, takes up the whole bottom floor of our house, which is perched on the edge of a famous cemetery, hence the cafe's cretastical name. Currently, Granny Blue is doing her best to keep the bone the boneyard running as business hasn't been too great lately. I'm back here, yelled a voice that unfortunately belonged to my big brother Tover and not one of the dearly departed. I'd never actually seen the ghost in our kitchen. I'd only heard banging around, but due to my home's location, I figure I'm bound to run into a ghost eventually. The air was thick with the smell of chocolate as I walked into the kitchen. The cocoa cauldron was already bubbling near the far window. It was Topher's week to make the Boneyard Brew, our cafe's most famous treat. As near as I can describe it, Boneyard Brew is like hot chocolate with a heavenly twist. Maybe it seems crazy to drink hot chocolate in the summer, but I'm here to tell you, once you've had a taste of Boneyard Brew, you'll never stop craving it. Topher even makes homemade marshmallows. The marshmallow man himself was perched on the tip top of a tall ladder, digging through one of the supply cabinets like a scrawny snack bandit. Hungry? I asked him. Huh. Topher bumped his head on the cabinet and let out a low groan. He got all squinty-eyed pretending to be mad as he hunkered down to look at me, but I could see the start of a smile on his face. Emma Pearl Casey, I thought you might be a ghost. I yelled and declared myself, I know. Topher gave me the same dimpled cheek grin that made most of the girls at Blackbird Hollow Community College go googly-eyed. I was always skittish when I come down here before daylight. 
It is early for you to be making brew, I agreed. In my nearly 12 years of existence, we'd never opened before 10 a.m. on Sundays. I can't get this recipe out of my head, Topher said as a way of explanation. Peach lavender muffins. I won't have any peace of mind until I make them. And I thought I'd get the brew going while I was down here. I'm glad you're making extra. I usually have a big tour group in the graveyard on Sunday. Topher cocked his head and studied my face. Are you okay? You look troubled. I gave him a thumbs up. All good. Huh. He didn't look convinced. But he reached back into the cabinet and dislodged one of the giant silver muffin pans. He twisted out of the way as it clattered to the floor. Easy, I said as I jumped back to hand it to him. If you make any more noise down here, you'll, what, wake the dead? You and Blue play music so loud the dead can't get any sleep around here anyway. I was going to say wake my dog, but that's a fair point about the loud music. Tover stretched all tall again and got back to digging. He tossed a sack of Blue's organic flour down on the counter before he dismounted the rickety ladder. I could tell by the tune he was whistling that Topher was about to go into a serious baking frenzy. He'd already tied his red bandana securely around his head. That was a direct order from Granny Blue. Topher likes to let his hair grow long and shaggy for the summer, so Blue makes him pull his hair back when he bakes. I felt a soft thump, thump thump against my boot and looked down to see Bear Claw yawning up at me. I scooped her up into my arms and hugged her against my chest. When Topher took me to the animal shelter to pick out a pup, the lady said, we didn't want that dog because he was scrawny. But I knew from the first time I saw that dog, she was meant to be mine. I hope every person in the world gets to have an experience so wondrous, the sweet tug at your heart when you look at a dog and a dog looks at you and you know you're meant to take care of each other. Topher thought I made a fine choice picking that dog, but we both decided she needed a bolder name, something that helped her see herself in a new way. So I named her the toughest word I could think of, Bear Claw. I call her Bear for short. That day at the shelter, Bear leaped up into my arms as soon as I called out her name, as if she'd been waiting her whole life for someone to realize her true potential. Good morning, my fearless little fuzz monster, I said against her floppy ear. Bear nuzzled happily against my neck. Is Granny Blue still sleeping? I asked. I don't think she sleeps much anymore. Topher stirred the big spoon through the boneyard brew. He nodded toward her office. The door was closed, but a glow of yellow light seeped out into the hallway. Her light was on when I went to bed. I wouldn't be surprised if she stayed awake all night. Most of Blackbird Hollow was having a tough time making ends meet. And the cafe was no different. I cuddled Bear close but stayed in the doorway. Granny's rule is that Bear can't go into the kitchen. She says some people are particular about dog fur in their biscuits. Topher opened up a tiny jar full of dried lavender. He tap, tap, tapped out a teaspoon worth into the tiny sugar-filled pedestal. Flower dust already graced his cheekbones, neck, and hands as if some angel had reached down out of the clouds to trace my brother's features. Like, see now, this is what a perfect human looks like. We are not anything alike in that aspect, me and my brother. It would make way more sense if Topher was supposed to have the destiny dream, but he wasn't. The destiny dream would be happening to me, and soon, I hoped. Emma, Topher studied me carefully, I can see something's wrong. You might as well tell me. My brother can read people like a story. He knows when a smile's covering sadness and which sparkly-eyed look is a sure sign of a secret. He can hear a broken heart in the sound of someone's voice. The floors creaked under Topher's sneakers as he came to stand in front of me, like he was putting himself between me and the world, as if whatever was breaking my heart would have to get past him to get to me. It's the big empty, I whispered, cuddling Bear tight against the internal ache in my chest. I woke up thinking that I wanted to talk to Mama, and then I realized I couldn't talk to her. I shrugged 
It aches, is all. Missing her is a terrible ache. Topher reached out to hug me, but I spun around and headed for the door. I'm fine, Toph. No need to start the day all morbid and sad. Anyway, I'm off to see the long ago dearly departed. I made my way through the kitchen door and onto the back porch. The screen door slapped shut behind me, and I stared out over the dreamy morning world. The dark night had already faded to a pretty pale blue at the horizon. A cool wind pricked my skin and rustled the branches of the big oak in the center of the field. It was a life sound the wind made, a pretty rasp and then shh, which was kind of strange considering all that lay before me. As far as I could see, the headstones and statues of Blackbird Hollow Cemetery picked up from the mist. I plucked a white daisy from the grass, stuck it in my braid, and set out to walk amongst those graves, just the same as always. I only walk in the daylight, though. Everybody in town knows you never set foot in Blackbird Hollow Cemetery at night. Most people are too skitterbrained to go there during the day as well. But I'm not afraid. Not exactly. Okay, here's the honest truth. Sometimes I do feel like something is following me around in the graveyard. At, at times, that feeling comforts me. It's like I'm being watched over. But every now and then, I get a certain chill and feel more like I'm being flat out watched. I was right about both things, but I didn't know it yet. So in this first chapter, we have learned that Emma, her mother has passed away and she lives with her grandmother and her brother and they run a cafe right outside of a cemetery. And Emma is still waiting on her extraordinary destiny dream, but she's the one that gets to have the destiny dream, not her brother. So that's very interesting. I wonder why her brother wouldn't be having the dream. He seems to be much older than her. So if you're interested in finding out why she gets the dream and her brother doesn't and what her destiny is, then you might want to check out The Key to Extraordinary. It's in the library. Come check it out. Have a great weekend, friends.